Hello, my name is Sterling Link, and I'd like to tell you about a walk that I took. Many of you who are on this channel probably realize I serve in ministry, and as part of that experience, we get to go to school. A candidate for, for ordination in the Lutheran Church, and they ask us to go and, you know, take four or five years, or maybe even a little longer, to, to go and get some theological education and education about leading about leading communities, uh, Christian communities and leading, and leading in the church. And so I'm actually sort of near the end of that process and I am and I'm taking sort of this sort of capstone course about God and the theology of God's mission in the world and what God is up to. And there's a sort of a premise to this is that that God is, you know, not sitting inside a church building only. Uh, God is at work doing things, making things happen out in the world. And before we can talk about our mission as a church or even our mission as individuals, we probably want to think about and talk about God first. And so I went for a little bit of a walk. So why would I go for this walk? What And what does that have to do with God and God's mission? So as part of this course that I'm taking, again, on, on God's uh, on, on God's mission in the world, we are asked to do these action learning experiments and to go do certain things. And a lot of these tend to either have us uh, sort of again, out in the world and engaging folks outside of our community or outside of our church community into the into the broader community. And so uh, one of them was what we'll call a God walk. And here's what a God walk is, is about. You go out for 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour. Um, you want to sort of keep your eyes open. You know, where might God be? You take it in your community. So I took my God walk out in my neighborhood, in my community. You keep your eyes open for what God may be up to and uh, where God has been at work or the Holy Spirit's doing things. You know, look for coincidences, look for look for strange things that there that maybe you haven't noticed. Um, at the very least, just being really mindful of your area and take a couple moments, you know, so if you're out for half an hour, maybe after 10 minutes, then again after 10 minutes, uh, and pause and pray. And then if you really, really, really want uh, bonus points, uh, if you encounter anybody out there while you're on your on your God walk, maybe check up a conversation with them and see if there's anything that uh, they want to want to be want to have prayed for. And it can be a really interesting experience. I think mean, that's sort of the challenge. I think it gets you a little more challenging. Uh, in this time with, with, with COVID-19 and all that, and we're supposed to be distanced from each other, so it makes it a little bit, a little bit more challenging. So I want to tell you about, let me tell you about this walk. I'll do that by showing you this photo here. I'll make it a little bigger here. So this here um, is a couple, and they were out in a walk right when I started my walk. So this is uh, I live in, uh, I own a condominium on the far east side of Madison. I left my condominium to go for my walk and I ran into these two. And I tell you, either it was luck or it was coincidence or it was the Holy Spirit. I'm guessing, I'm, I'm, I'm proposed that the Holy Spirit uh, has, uh, is, is, is a very likely candidate here. I run into these two. And why is that? Well, as I mentioned, or maybe I didn't mention, I am really near the end of my seminary experience here. I've been doing this for for five years, and um, really, and really about to uh, be ordained in the Lutheran Church as a pastor, and hopefully be called to, to serve in a community. So, really, actually, be called to serve a Christian community, and then be ordained. That's how we Lutherans do it. I ran in and ran into these two. And why are these two important, uh, these two super important and really special to me? Well, this couple here are longtime members, and I will also call them ministers, at uh, my first church where I did contextual learning. So seminary isn't just about the books, though the books are really important. It's certainly about your Bible. It, you read a lot of stuff, but it isn't just about the classroom. Uh, my seminary experience has been very contextual. It's been going and working and working in and alongside and learning from church communities. And uh, these folks are from St. Stephen's Lutheran Church in Monona, Wisconsin, which is pretty near my home. Um, these two are special to me because just about the time when I was sort of getting my first taste of sort of this missiological thinking, right, and, and thinking about God's mission, 
um, I was serving in my first contextual learning site at St. Stephen's. And one of my first tasks, my, one of my major projects was running a Bible study for, for a group, for a group. And these two were part of that group. Uh, the woman who was on uh, uh, there, uh, the wife, um, the husband's a little bit quieter, actually very quieter. Um, but she was very, very outspoken and very opinionated. And part of that process of the, of the Bible study that I ran was really more of an extended dwelling on the word experience, which was something that was very different. For them. They were very used to like lectures and being told what things meant and really actually having a pastor or a pastoral intern uh, facilitating and running Bible studies and teaching it like a course. And so when I changed this up and I ran this more of a dwelling place as a, as a, as a rookie seminarian um, and sort of leaned out of practice instead of deep knowledge that I didn't really necessarily have yet, we had some conflict. And so, uh, but we were able to end what I think is actually sort of what I'll hope is sort of Holy Spirit inspired conflict, some holy conflict. And we, we worked it out. And by the end of this experience, right, it was really clear that this congregation wasn't going to be able to have a pastoral, a paid pastor or pastoral intern be there to facilitate their Bible studies. And so I sort of called her and I sort of had on my heart that she should uh, sort of take over the ministry of that of, of, of that Bible study group and and guide it and facilitate it and help organize it. And she was like, no, 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 I can't do that. I can't do that. Well. Um, turns out, after catching up with these folks for a little bit, turns out five years later, she is running this right now. She is running that Bible study still, and um, it's really exciting. And I guess, and, I, and I'll be really honest, I didn't get a chance to do super amounts of walking around the neighborhood. I didn't get a chance to pause a couple times in my, my half an hour or so to go and figure out uh, what God is up to. Instead. Uh, I talked to these folks, and that was great. And it sort of just reminded me that however I minister, however I minister at all, um, you can have a real impact on folks. And that, I don't know, in some ways, I'd like to think the Holy Spirit sort of put these two in front of me to let me know that, um, that you know, as we, that that what I have to share, whether I share it with in a, in a church community or I share it out in the world, can have a long-term long, long impact on folks. And not just me, of course, I'm not the special one, but that all of us. So that's the walk. And thank you very much for listening. Good night.